So, Sal, just to interrupt mm. you for, for a slight minute. Mm -hmm. What was it that Boris said about um, Spider-Man chip that time that you used as an intro? Sometimes. Oh, sometimes. okay. Would you like to have sex with my ship? <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to Partners in Grind and Anubis made me bring it in this time. I don't know why he did that to me. Why not? I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's still leftover messages from the last episode so if you're wondering what that was all about uh, you can watch the end of the last one. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good point, actually. If we'd have just waited a few seconds longer, all of those messages would have disappeared. Would have been gone, yeah, like they are now. Yeah. I wonder how I'm doing for ore. Uh... Oh yeah, let's have a look and see what we've got. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just to finish the Minecon story, I've got... 288,000. I bet you've got more than me. Yeah, I've got quite a bit already. I'm looking at my. So my, my pick is. Or my, uh, my connector is full. Mm -hmm. um, looks like my cargo container is full. My drills are getting full, but they're not full yet. So I can still go for a little bit. We'll probably have to do what we did last time, whereas near the end of this episode, we'll fly back over to my place. <laughs> yeah. And separate it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if we if you run out of space, we can always like do the ship copulation thing, and you can drop some in my ship and empty yours out. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do. Um... Yes, I'm going to leave it with what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I had a very uh, PG and engineering type way of saying the same thing, and I decided that your way was way better, so I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, you were saying about Minecon. Uh, yeah, um, the Minecon was great. I enjoyed it. It was good fun and all of that. But the thing that um, I enjoyed most about Minecon was that because I wasn't at work and I had plenty of sort of free time and I had no computer, well I took my laptop but I couldn't really game and I couldn't do any editing and so I had a lot of time on my hands um, and I spent hours and hours and hours talking with Mia Oh. and I just really really enjoyed that uh, just getting to know Mia better. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually my favourite thing about the whole of Minecon. Hmm. And when Mia watches this, he's going to cringe so bad. <laughs> yeah, he he doesn't. He struggles really nice with anyone. Uh, re he struggles really bad when anyone says anything nice about him. He doesn't know how to take it. Yeah, well, he's got to get used to it because he's awesome and we're going to keep saying nice things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So would you would you go again, or have you been there, done that? Oh no, definitely, definitely do it again. And I did get the t-shirt. The t-shirt is cool. <laughs> I got the t-shirt and the lanyard and the uh, all the bits, all the bits and pieces and things and stuff. All the, um, uh, what do they call that? Swag. Yeah, all the swag. And all the swag that you... I actually got offered money for my t-shirt. Because it's uh, it was an agent's t-shirt. So it wasn't oh. one available. Same with things like the lanyard. It was... Um, and they're all themed. So uh, the, the agent's lanyard uh, has a picture of an iron golem on it. Whereas all of the general public's lanyards had something else. I think they had creepers or something. Okay. So the agents, sort of everything that we had, had some sort of iron golem. So yeah, uh, they were themed, so that yeah. you, if you weren't of that ilk, you didn't get that thing. Uh-huh, that's right. And the agents had uh, green t-shirts, whereas the staff had grey t-shirts, and the... Uh, I can't remember what t-shirts you could... colours you could actually buy, but you couldn't buy an agent t-shirt. 
you could only get cool, it because then oh, then yeah. then like because you, you had to work for that right yeah yeah so yeah. it's 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 kind of cool that it was exclusive for the people that were putting in that effort yeah and on the uh the first day that i was working which was a setup day that was the only day where i wasn't looking after celebrities um my I, I joined the IT team to go and set up the computers uh, and I fell into role where the guys who who were, I mean I, I can set up a computer but there were people there who do that for a living so uh, I took up the role of making sure that they were all kept in in sort of the components they needed <laughs> and uh, I supplied everybody with peripherals and cables and all <laughs> the things that they needed in order to build the things that they needed to build and I was happy as Larry <laughs> and is Larry a generally happy guy? he is he is okay uh, there's and they gave me this enormous great big uh, it for it was like a wooden cargo container which was just full of cables and all these cables were all tangled and messy and so I spent oh several hours just untangling cables <laughs> just really enjoying it <laughs> 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 while everyone else is cursing over Windows set up some product keys I was there learning more than I really needed to know about VGA cable head sizes <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's kind of like the things you don't expect to hear about going to a gaming conference, right? Because you're <laughs> you're right in there with all of the, the setup and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I was there moving things out the way while they were laying the carpet and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it was. Yeah, really properly, properly back backstage. Hmm. Good stuff. <laughs> Oh, and that reminds me of a story I was going to tell. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is, okay, so this is a long, uh, a, a very, very tenuous link, but it did... Uh... <laughs> the best kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was talking about Mia, which came from talking about Minecon, got me talking about Mia, and that reminded me of um, a story about Germany. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of my favorite very places tenuous. in the whole world. <laughs> yeah. Um... I, uh, I've talked about how I had a job which uh, had me travel in the world. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, before I got that job where I was traveling the world, I had barely traveled anywhere. Uh, I had, I, in my entire life, I had taken one plane ride. I had been on one flight. Wow. And I joined, so I joined this, the company uh, and I had been asked whether I was whether I wanted to do national or international and whether I wanted to do technical or commodity and I was just like oh yeah you can stick me on international I'll do whatever you want if I get to travel that's great mm -hmm. um, but they assumed that I had some experience of traveling <laughs> And because I'd opted for technical rather than commodity, there was a nine month training program um, to, and because what I was doing was dealing a lot with foreign governments and helping them to design infrastructure networks um, and helping them get the funding from World Bank or the International Monetary Fund and putting together tenders and sort of technical specs. And so it was quite an involved job and there was a lot of training. Uh, before I could travel and the whole time I was terrified that they were going to realize that I had never actually been anywhere <laughs> so my entire experience had been um, I'd been on a day trip to France which involved uh, a coach ride uh, getting on a ferry crossing the ferry to the other side of the channel getting off in a foreign speaking country um, but that's only sort of 20 miles from the English border um, and I had taken one flight 
just because I really, really, really wanted to go on an airplane. And I'd flown from Manchester Airport to Frankfurt, because that was the cheapest place I could find. Uh, and I'd, uh, I had, a few years earlier, learned some German and very bad at languages. And I thought maybe if I go to Germany, and go live in Germany for a few months, like sort of, this is sort of school, uh, well, university holidays. You get sort of three months, the, the three months summer semester type thing. So I'll go stay in Germany and I'll go learn how to speak German proper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Best laid plans. Uh, yeah, it didn't quite work out like that. My German was just as bad when I came back as it was when I went there. So Sal, just have to mm. interrupt you for, for a slight minute. Mm -hmm. What was it that Boris said about um, Spider-Man chip that time that you used as an intro? Sometimes. Oh, sometimes. okay. Would you like to have sex with my ship? <laughs> 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 Let me just uh, reverse away from the rock a little bit in case you get a bit rough with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you can continue on and I'll see. Is it this uh, right, connector, connector right here? On the no, bottom? not the one. No, that's my ejector. Oh, that's your ejector. Uh, that off? Yeah, yeah. So it's the one at the back. It might not be the easiest thing to connect to because it doesn't oh, protrude it very much. It's kind of heavily protected against yeah. people who might ram here. it to rocks. But mine does uh, stick out a bit. So. <laughs> oh, I need to turn mine on. Yeah, and we probably have yep, to share okay. with each other. Mine's on. Uh, it should be. Let me check. Uh, I need to go info. No, not info. Uh, everything shared with all. Yeah, I've got everything shared with all. I have to have everything shared with all because of the number of times you come out without anything in your containers. <laughs> That's right. Okay, I'm kind of... Oops, wrong way. I remember the last time I was trying to do this with Boris, um, the pair of us were both trying to drive. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work so well. All right, I'm locked. Oop, no, I'm not. Okay, now yeah. I'm locked. All right. All right, so I will transfer stuff all over to you, and you yep. continue on with your study. Mm-hmm. So I ha so I'm just sorry. I'm just watching the cargo containers filling. Oh, does it pulling? Oh, is it like sucking? Did it? I don't think so. I think you need yep, to transfer. Everything's empty. Wow. Wow. Okay. okay so your ship so is I... like the the greedy stealer ship. <laughs> That's nice to know. So do you have everything in there now? Like it looks I like. Don't know. Here, let me is disconnect yours... mine. Is yours empty? Oops, not that's what I wanted. Uh... No. Okay. No, I have some in the connector still. It looked like you had some in your cargo container as well. Oh, wait, no, the drills... Okay, I see. Weird. It's oh, so it's emptied all your drills into mine. Yeah. Or emptied your drills... Emptied enough space to empty your drills. Yeah, so I have to do the other the other bits, but uh, the yeah. drills went straight into your mm -hmm. empty space. I guess that's by design. That's how they work. Yeah. All so right. you should be able to just do it by picking it up in a single lump and just dropping the whole lot in. Yeah, I'm just trying to find where your... So it's the cargo rear? Is that where I want to put it all? Yeah, that'll be fine. Any of them. Alright. So how do you empty ones? So now I just got to go through. So yeah, so you continue on. Uh-huh. So I'd um, say so I'd had two flights in uh, one flight in my entire life which was going from my yeah it is full you're right uh except my drills i've got loads of space in my drills but is that your only cargo container uh fill both of them and my connector oh wow okay well then i'll just uh i'll just keep drilling with what space i have left then and then we'll have yeah, to yeah we wow we filled up both ships it looks like almost so Okay, I'll just go start drilling again then. I'll mm -hmm. leave what I have in here. Alright, so sorry. Again, to try uh -huh. to continue on. 
yeah. Sorry for that slight distraction there. A bit of ship copulation always. Um... That's right. We had to um, uh, we had to use our brain brainstem there. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And stories and brainstems just don't go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so in, in my fear of being caught out that uh, I'd never travelled anywhere and here I was in a job work in the export market where they wanted to send me away to all kinds of foreign and exotic places and I was very eager to go to foreign and exotic places um, and I, I knew that if they thought I was that inexperienced that there's no way they would send me to foreign and exotic places. <laughs> Uh, and the, the countries that I started off with, the territories that I was given to look after, uh, were all the places that nobody else wanted to go to. Hmm. So I got South America and China and it was Eastern Bloc at the time, so sort of Eastern Europe and Russia and um, and all the weird places. When I say weird, I mean the, the places that didn't fit into anyone's territory comfortably. So I got Iceland and uh, just all kinds of the most amazing places to go to. I didn't get to go to them all, but uh, I got to go to plenty of them. That's so cool. Uh, but in this nine months of training, uh, every time, because they were all traveling such a lot, there was always stories about which type of plane they'd been on and stories about airports and and so I cooked up this story which I kept going for nine months about <laughs> how every time I'd ever flown uh, it had always been on a stretch 747 and I was just like it's, it's, a, it's such a bizarre coincidence but every single plane I've ever been on has always been one of those and, uh, <laughs> and they're saying and they're asking me like well have you only ever traveled in europe and i was like yeah yeah you know because i was open about that i said i've so i've traveled all over europe which is true because when i i've I'd taken this one one uh flight to frankfurt and i then caught a train uh when i was traveling back to the uk i caught a train from germany traveled through germany uh, it gone through Belgium and Holland and um, <laughs> and it, so the train had gone through a number of different countries in order to get to the ferry to take me back to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, travelled all over Europe, um, and of course this one, this one day trip to France as well, which counted us all over Europe. Um, <laughs> I just wasn't very specific as to exactly what I meant by all over Europe. Uh, it's a commission <laughs> of information, right? Yeah, you weren't absolutely. lying. You were just, I just holding back some details. details absolutely. <laughs> um, so, so, so they weren't terribly surprised that me with my European travels had uh, I'd only ever been on a stretch 747 because there are lots of stretch 747s that work the European market and when we were talking about airports and things I used to uh, I'd tell them that my favorite airport in the whole world was Manchester because at the end of the day Manchester was home <laughs> Um, when people talk about like the awful airports that they've been to, and because they, you know, we ended up in some really backwater places at times, and I'd say that for all the airports in all the world that I've ever been to, so the one that I liked the least was Frankfurt because it was like it was just too clean and too sterile and too organised, and it's like, well, I've only ever been to two airports, <laughs> that was Manchester and Frankfurt. <laughs> <laughs> and actually Frankfurt's a very nice airport uh, and especially yeah, now yeah, that I have been to airports all around the world <laughs> I can say that and justify it whereas at the time I only had two airports <laughs> that I <could> talk about. <laughs> and yeah I managed to keep that I managed to sound like I was a seasoned traveller for all that time uh, with just those two stories and I completely blagged it uh, and after 
because uh, there was no sort of official end to your training. It just got to the point where one day my boss said to me, uh, Sal, um, can you go to China a week on Friday? We need you to go there for at least a month. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, oh my God, Twist oh my, my God. my rubber arm, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was my first ever long haul flight. Um, I flew into the... It was one of the last flights going into the old airport in Hong Kong, which was amazing. The old airport, the planes, um, they used to have to bank sideways to get the wings between the skyscrapers in Hong Kong. Oh, God. I, I mean, if I now, with my much more travelled experience, I would actually be quite afraid going into that airport. Uh, but back then, with in total naivety, it <laughs> was amazing. You know, the, the fact that the planes would twist to go between the skyscrapers. Oh, yeah. You were looking into people's windows from the plane. Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been to China yet. It's definitely a place that I really want to go. But, but yeah, I've, I've heard about that, but I've never experienced it yet. Well, that airport's... I, d I don't think it exists anymore, or oh, if it okay. does, it's only local, because uh, they've got, they built a, a big airport out on a sort of man-made island. Oh, okay. Was, Japan did that too, didn't they? They they actually built a massive airport out on a, uh, like yeah. a man-made yeah, island. Because space is a problem for Japan. <laughs> yeah. So oh. it was, uh, yeah, I ended up um, living in China for a while, but um, did a And now you speak fluent yeah. Mandarin, right? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I was, when I was, I was chatting with Mia earlier about languages, because cause he's, he's an English language uh, student and intends to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was saying languages are just not my skill. It's I can turn my hand to so many things, but not languages. It's it's just really is my weakness. Yeah, I've tried as well. I have a really hard time with them. Mm. I've tried multiple, multiple times to learn French, and I just can't get it. Oh, of course, because I mean, you actually have French speakers in your country as well. Yeah, yeah, and I love I love like like Montreal is is. An amazing city. I've been there a few times, and uh, it would just be nice to be able to actually speak French. Of course, yeah. if there's anybody from France watching, then they don't think that Quebec speaks French. And if anybody from Quebec's watching, then they don't think that French speaks French. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how it is. But that's yeah. how it is with any language that uh, is separated. Uh, people from the same place are separated for long periods of time. They get their own dialects and changes to the words and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like you. I mean, you talk really funny. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm a strange, <laughs> I'm a strange one. <laughs> you Canadians. That's right. You watch out. I'll go get drunk Spider-Man and we'll team up on you. <laughs> well, no matter how you look at it, I still speak the mother tongue. <laughs> That's right. That's where it all came from. Although, I mean, even, even English from England is such a hodgepodge of languages, right? It's like... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's like, totally stolen. Poor England was invaded, I don't know how many times before they finally figured out how to take over the world. But, yeah, um, but yeah like, like from from all sides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and then, if, then the invaders would, you know, their language and the language that was in England at the time or in the islands at the time, right? We'd get merged together and turn into something different and slowly but surely evolve into what we have today. Yeah. It's crazy. English history yeah. is quite interesting. It's, it I is. Mean, There's, because uh, it's what, invaded by the Romans, the Saxons who are from Germany. Yeah, the the Angles, which were also German, but later it, on. Yeah. <laughs> The uh, the Normans who were from France, but actually um, the name Norman comes from Norsemen yep. because they were actually from the north. Uh, yep. Vikings, yep. basically. The Vikings took it, yeah, and then, and then there was the Vikings, uh, the Danes, because yep. King Canute 
um, was uh, the king of all, well, pretty much most of Europe, most of Northern Europe, including the UK. Um, yeah, it, it's just been, and every time somebody's invaded, they've come along with the language and the, the natives have stolen a good part of it. <laughs> and it's interesting how the language is sort of moderated because like in France I know they have the the, the the sort of the somebody who decides what is proper French and what isn't proper French hmm. um, uh, whereas in the UK uh, the general rule is that if it's in the Oxford English Dictionary then it's English it's officially adopted and the Oxford English Dictionary has a rule that if something has been written I think it's more than 25,000 times then it's English oh, okay yeah interesting so but we are over time oh are we? I just realized that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we probably should uh, say goodbye and we'll be back next time <laughs> see you soon bye bye